Commission of Inquiry is seeking an extension to submit its final report. The Commission filed an application at the High Court in Pretoria requesting an extra two months. Inquiry Chairperson Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo says President Sir Ramaphosa will receive the report in three parts. At the same time, civil society organization Democracy in Action has questioned whether it was legally permissible for the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture to hand over its report to President Sir Ramaphosa. Here on, to unpack this and more, I'm joined now by social justice activists with Democracy in Action, Tabum Tsweni, as well as legal expert, Advocate Romeo Mdambirin. To be a part of the conversation tonight, send us your WhatsApp questions or comments on 072-110-584 or tweet us at Newsroom. Four zero five, Gentlemen, good to have you with us tonight, and uh, thank you for your time. Tom, let's begin with you. I mean, um, w what are you basing your query on? Uh, good evening, Tabo, and good evening to our viewers at home. Um, what we're basing our question to, to the State Capture Commission is that uh, you'll, you'll remember that the deputy president by that time was Mr. Zora Ramaphosa during the years of state capture that uh, the, the, the commission is inquiring. He was also part of, or oh, well, he was the head of the ANC head of develop, um, deployment. So that means that he played a very huge role uh, in, in appointing some of the uh, leaders in the SOEs. And he, also, he, he was also a witness during the state capture commission. So now you've got the situation where the president was at that time a witness, now he must go and implement a report. And apart from that, there are few other people that mentioned his name in the same State Capture Commission. So we feel that uh, the president might not be a correct person to receive this report. Uh, so we've written to the State Capture Commission uh, to acting Justice, uh, Chief Justice Zondo to ask him these questions and really to find out from him what, it, what are his views on this matter. Yeah. As, as, as a social activist, I mean, uh, do you believe that he played a role in, in state capture, at least? No, we don't believe that he played a role uh, per se, but uh, because one, he was a witness and other witness mentioned his name. So we can't have a report that it's been done before it's been handed out. So the state capture committee or the uh, acting chief justice cannot just rule out his name uh, outside the report. He must rule out his name inside the report. Uh, so that's why we think that uh, it will be incorrect for him to receive this report. Yeah. And we can dump it in. I mean, is it legally permissible that um, the one, I mean, who is mentioned in the report, uh, one, or at least in the testimonies, two, who was a witness, uh, three, who possibly could have been a head of uh, a government business at the time, and was the head of the ESCOM war room and could have been uh, also responsible for the deployment of uh, several uh, 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 cadres to, to, to the SOEs be the one receiving this report. Of course, noting initially when the commission was established that uh, the, the courts ruled that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, rather President Jacob Zuma, should not appoint who will chair this commission because he can't be uh, the one appointing the very same person who will be making findings against him. Is it, is it a similar mm. situation? Yeah, no, Tavo. good evening to you and uh, good evening to the viewers as well. I think we have an answer from our guest uh, who uh, has spoken that uh, it's, it appears that the name you know, of the president might be implicated and also you know, him being a witness, uh, legally speaking, uh, uh, create a clear conflict of interest. That is correct. but. Let's not forget that the president owes his allegiance to the constitution and he has taken the oath of office to respect and uphold the constitution. So him being implicated by the report, indeed it does create a conflict of interest. But the, you know, the question is what happens when the report is in his hands? If the report is untainted and is released in its state and its nature, that is supposed to be, then you know, uh, indeed the president might might have you know, executed his function because without removing him and not handing it over to him, you create a, a constitutional crisis because the constitution gives him that responsibility to, you know, to receive the report. Because the question that should, we should be asking ourselves is who should then receive the report you know, after it has been you know, completed? And then you know, he is the, the president of the Republic of South Africa and he must actually you know, receive that you know, particular report. And if yeah. That report, in terms of its content, remain untainted and is released to the public in its nature 
and the form that implicates him. It means that indeed the president is uh, executing his responsibilities and duties in terms of the constitution. Yeah. The second question relates where it implicates him and then what happens. Then it triggers the parliamentary processes of removal of a uh, president from the office in terms of section 89. So I think uh, we shouldn't jump ahead of ourselves. The uh, concerns are legitimate, but you know, let's see how, when the report is actually handed to the president, what happens after then, I think those questions can be you know, uh, directly answered and properly answered. Yeah, I won't speak for Tabo, he'll speak for himself, but I can almost mm -hmm. hear a question that says, well, we already created a constitutional crisis when we said the former president you, should not appoint the chair uh, of uh, the Commission of Inquiry in, in, into state capture. We are already in Thank that you. space right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 might, we might be in that, in that, in that space, and then, uh, then, then we should be asking ourselves who then should, you know, maybe Tawis will tell us who then should receive that re report, and, uh, and who they recommend that will be a suitable candidate to re receive the report, because it is correct that the president was a deputy president, you know, and at the time of state capture, he was also a witness, and some witnesses have implicated him, that is correct, we, we agree with that, and then who should then receive the report? Because when it's done, someone has to uh, you know, actually receive the report on behalf of uh, you know, the government. Tabo? Uh, thanks, Tabo, and thanks for, for clarifying uh, the advocate there. Uh, yes, I wanted to come to that matter that we already have a constitutional crisis uh, in the same State Capture Commission because the former president uh, had his rights also in the Constitution, and he also shown uh, to protect the constitution as well, but his rights were removed by, by the former public protector, uh, advocate Tulima Donsela. So we're sitting with the same problem now. So the question is, maybe that 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 we should ask the, the advocate as well, is that since we since he agrees, of course, that there is already a constitutional crisis on that matter, um, is, is, the, is this commission in its entirety uh, uh, still a suitable commission to deal with this matter. That's first. But second, uh, my answer, uh, my answer to his question will be: um, I think Parliament, uh, because everyone at the end of the day is accountable to Parliament, so Parliament can receive the report. The Speaker of the Parliament can receive the report, and and if the Speaker of the Parliament receives the report, then he can make sure that all the uh, uh, recommendation and uh, are implemented. And uh, we also have Deputy President uh, David Mabuza. Well, from the top of my head, uh, I don't remember his name being mentioned, you know. So, but for, for us as an organization, it's first the parliament, or if, if parliament is not suitable enough, then it will be uh, the deputy president, uh, Mr. Titi Mabuza. Tawa, do you believe that the, the, the report itself would enable the state to, to fight corruption? Uh, Tabo, no, I don't think so. At the wake of um, the, the, the Ramaphosa leaks, uh, the recording from the NEC meeting where he vows that uh, he knows exactly what happened during uh, campaigning. Uh, so, and as, as, as such, he is not uh, in a position to, to, to reveal or to speak out and, and, and uh, go to the police and report those matters to the police. So uh, already we've got a situation where the president himself uh, has denied us that opportunity to know exactly uh, what happened during campaigning, who was using state funds to campaign, you know, that's, that's number one. And secondly, uh, if you go to, to, to his own campaign, presidential campaign, the CR17 campaign, um, that is being sold uh, at uh, Pretoria North High Court. So also, that also raises questions. So I don't think we're in a space uh, to, to root out corruption or at least to start dealing with corruption, especially coming from the ANC uh, as, as a governing party. All right, let's take a break. We'll continue in a moment and get a response there from Advocate Ndambirene on that question. Parliament, or maybe the Speaker, uh, handing, uh, taking uh, uh, custody of that report, or maybe even Deputy President Didi Mabuza. What are your thoughts tonight on that question? 072-110-584. Tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. We'll continue in a moment. With you tonight on In Focus, uh, social justice activists with democracy a in action. Tabum Mtsweni with us as well as uh, we got expert advocate Romeo Ndambirene. And we are, of course, discussing the matter that they are raising, saying the president is not the desired person to receive this report from the Commission of Inquiry into state capture. Advocate, if the president is not the desired person to receive the report, would 
a Speaker of Parliament be one, or maybe even the Deputy President, and what remedy do you have here? Previously, we had, of course, the Public Protector report and the Public Protector in her recommendations saying, uh, I recommend that the Chief Justice appoint who will chair this particular yeah. commission. Uh, who, who will we go to to make that kind of an order? Yeah, uh, no, I think it, it has to, you know, to come from court. Uh, I heard what Tavo was saying in terms of recommending the, the Speaker or, you know, uh, of the National Assembly. I think the, the constitutionally, the you know, suitable person will be the deputy president of, of the country because the president also remains the member of the National Assembly and Parliament. So I think in terms of what he has recommended, the uh, deputy pre pre president might be a suitable candidate to receive that report. And in relation to what Tavo was saying, uh, of the implication of the recording that uh, you know, was had or so. That, uh, you know, it's a matter that, you know, is the matter for, you know, investigations by, you know, uh, uh, police. Because if the president has a responsibility, we have said it, you know, you know timeously, uh, you know, over and over and over again, that if any you know, a president knows anyone who is, uh, who, who is involved in corruption, you know, the, the president has a duty to actually report that particular person so that the steps will, will be taken. So the president cannot say that I have information that implicates certain people in, you know, malfeasance and corruptions, and I'm not going to do anything about it. It's, yeah. no, uh, that, that, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's unlawful and it cannot be you know, uh, condoned yeah. because that is what actually state capture is all about. You cannot have information and, you know, don't use that information to get those that are supposed to be prosecuted to be prosecuted because you must be leading from the front as the president and the constitution requires you to do that do that duty as you have taken the oath and affirm uh, that you're going to protect and uphold the constitution and the laws of the republic of south africa so when the laws are not being followed and they're broken and you are aware of those people you become an accessory you know in those kind of activities so i don't know how deep you know uh, that conversation is which tavo is referring to but uh, you know, legally speaking, the, you know, the president is aware of the responsibility that he has you know, towards the constitution and the allegiance that he has shown to the constitution when he take, you know, takes the oath of office. Yeah. I, I don't know how much trouble we are in when uh, possibly we, we, we could now see a repeat uh, here where yet another president has come out to say, I know people who are stealing uh, and yeah. have done nothing about it. <laughs> right, Tabo? I mean, it's not the first time that we are hearing a president say these things. Yes, it's not a first time, but if we want to turn the tide, uh, the, especially where corruption is concerned, this is exactly the time where everyone must come up and say, I know so-and-so is involved in corruption. Because the other question that we might want to ask ourselves, is the president shielding the people that he thinks or he knows um, uh, that they committed a certain crime uh, because of the same people are shielding him uh, from, from revealing uh, names and everyone who was involved in in his CR17 campaigns, so this is this is a very difficult question. Hence, hence our 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 mind on that matter is that uh, the president must actually the state capture commission must invite the president and ask him these questions, and uh, so that we can get to the final answer and so that we can start rooting out corruption. So, but if we if we want to as a country uh, to root out corruption, that will be the first step. At this moment, uh, the president sounds like he knows something or he says in his own ways that he knows something but he's saying he's not going to reveal anyone so that is concerning on its own yeah. so i guess this 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 goes also to the president that uh, he might want to self introspect and 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 either go to the police or go to the commission again yeah in your mind tabo for a president as the leader of the uh, a war room uh, and that largely being canvassed at the Commission of Inquiry and its activities. Is there something adverse that came out of this inquiry that uh, uh, would actually have a, a negative finding on him? Well, that, that is for the Commission to, 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 uh, to declare to us. But from where we're standing is that uh, the, the evidence that was given about the war room, that the president was controlling everything from... from uh, union buildings uh, every every second or every week he was receiving reports to an extent that people were not able to to do their job because they had to prepare a report uh, starting from monday uh, delivery to the deputy president and uh, the matter uh, with with uh, him 
holding shares at um, Genco, and Genco at that time was a share, was 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 a service provider to ESCOM. So all those matters are concerning. Uh, hence, uh, we cannot allow uh, the commission to make uh, to make um, a recommendation outside the report, and those recommendations will be that. No, the president is not involved in this, so we'll give him a report. For the mere fact that his name was mentioned, for the mere fact that he was a witness in the, witness in the same commission, the president should not be the one receiving that report. Yeah. If in, 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 in indeed a, a, an adverse finding advocate was to be made against, for example, something like the deployment committee of the ANC, what is the legal standing of a deployment committee in the bigger scheme of things as far as the role that they played uh, in appointing leaders to state-owned enterprises? Yeah, uh, no, it, it creates the very same issues that we are actually raising to say that, you know, when you have got, you know, uh, you know uh, political you know, players and masters having their hands on the state, you know, you know pie, it creates a, you know, a, a problem that has to be reported to the NPA for prosecution. So, you know, as Tavo is uh, rightly saying, we have to wait for the content of report, the report to actually determine how deep no, no, the, the road went and how it actually played its role in relation to the impact on the state capture. And then after that, when the recommendations have been made to the NPA, what is going to happen in relation to the prosecution and prosecution of those that are actually involved in the malfeasance as you know, uh, the State Capture Commission would have uh, actually recommended. I think that way we will be able to know, you know what, what will be the next step that will be taken legally in terms of the prosecutions of those that were you know involved in state capture and there is evidence that is linking them to you know uh, the abuse of state you know, resources. Yeah. Do 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 we have a legal record that we can refer to? I mean, in this instance, maybe let me simplify it. If if I am responsible for appointing yeah. you to a yeah. particular SOE, and you go there and conduct yourself in a manner that is uh, not in line with what you're supposed to do as far as your fiduciary duties are concerned. Legally, mm -hmm. am, am, am I liable? No, 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 not in that essence. Uh, you, know, you know, in relation to your appointment, if the appointment was proper and it, you know, it ticks all the boxes in terms of the law, I, you know, the, the, the person who is appointed, who then acted unlawfully, is the one that is responsible because you are actually not acting on behalf of that organ. Is the organ that was appointed that is actually acting and then takes full responsibility in relation to the appointment. But if there is something that you have requested the organ to do, you know, in your favor because of the appointment that you have made, then, you know, uh, then corruption comes into the play and then, then that is when you will be implicated in terms of receiving, you know, perhaps bribes or monetary values and yeah. monetary ben benefits, you know, under the law. So yeah. based on that, then they can, you can be implicated. But if you, uh, the appointment was proper, and it fits the requirements of the law. And outside the appointment, you have not acted unlawfully. I don't think there's anything that will implicate you in relation to that appointment. The appointed candidate himself will have to be responsible and answer you know, to the failure of you know, governance in terms of what they were doing when they were in office, in terms of you know, uh, you know, the corruption that is being investigated, which they're implicated on. I appreciate your time, gentlemen. Tabo raising a very important question. Let's hear what the response is going to be, if any, from the Commission of Inquiry to State Capture to your query. But thank you very much for coming through and joining us at tonight here on In Focus.